Over the years, at one time or another, we've all had to deal with alkaline batteries that leaked inside of electronic devices, and many of those devices were permanently damaged. All alkaline batteries have the potential to leak, but based on my experience and countless others, of the two top brands, Energizer and Duracell, Duracell is much more prone to leaking electrolyte. Today you're going to see a testing method that I came up with to see how much pressure the battery seals can withstand before leaking. The reason why alkaline batteries leak is because as the battery is drained down, either from years of storage due to self-discharge, leaving the battery inside of a device that always places an extremely small amount of current on the battery, or after partially discharging the battery, then storing it. As alkaline batteries are discharged, hydrogen gas forms inside. If the pressure gets high enough inside, what's going to happen, liquid electrolyte is going to be forced out of the battery past the seal. Now I've never seen anyone test the way I'm about to show you and I have no idea what the results will be. The test may or may not work, but we're going to find out. The first thing I wanna do is cut open one brand new battery from each, but before I do that, I'm going to peel away the labels on each one so we can take a closer look at the batteries. Right here you can see the shelf life for the Duracell is March of 2031 and for the Energizer, December of 2030. Right here you can see the cathode end, which is the positive, and it appears to be welded very tightly on that end. So the outside of the case is positive along with the tip. If you look at the opposite end, this is the end where the problem usually happens. It's the anode or the negative end. The electrolyte will leak right in between the seal that you see right here. So positive where my fingernail is, negative on that button in the center. Here's a look at the Energizer, it's the same thing. The end is welded very nicely to the body. And the other end, so we're going to test how good the seal is on the anode end of the battery. The AA batteries have the exact same seal, it's just a larger diameter battery and longer. Cutting open each one of the alkaline batteries is going to be very easy using this tubing cutter. I don't want to tighten this knob too much because I don't want to dent in the case. So I'm going to turn it a lot more and let it gradually cut in. And we are in. Okay, we're through. Place this over here for a minute. All right, you can see that. And there's some electrolyte coming out. You can see it looks a little wet. Right here we're looking at the housing with the positive end. You can see there's a band of dark material on the inside of that tube. What that is, is manganese dioxide. Looking at the other half of the battery, this is the flat end or the negative. That same manganese dioxide is located just underneath the steel shell between this paper separator and the steel body. The intersection of the battery, this tube with the paper separator, is filled with zinc powder and potassium hydroxide. That's your alkaline material, the electrolyte that ends up leaking out. Now I could slide this apart and you should be able to see the collector pin, which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So let me just grab this and pull. Okay. This is a very, very wet, feels very mushy wet. And the material, plastic on the outside, And right there you can see it, it's this gray paste, so it's zinc mixed with the potassium hydroxide. Just to show you the Energizer, let me cut it open very quickly so you can do a comparison. One thing I noticed, there is a little bit more electrolyte actually in the Energizer. Just pull this apart very carefully. A little tighter. The middle section is also a little fatter. You can see the collector pin right here. 
Same material as the Duracell. Now let me show you how I'd like to test the seals on the batteries. Right here's a look at my testing setup, which can be modified if pressure isn't enough. So right here I took one of the squeeze bulbs. It's an inflation bulb. You could use it for the locksmith air wedges. It could be used for blood pressure cuffs. I attached that to the very end. Over here is a valve, so it lets the air only go out. It's a check valve, and if I want to let the pressure out of the line, just unscrew this little knob. 3 8 inch braided hose. I have my T right over here, and you can see there's a very short section of 3 8 hose. The clamp is left loose. I'm going to take each one of these ends, slide it inside this tube, leaving maybe a half of an inch sticking out, tighten down the clamp very tightly, and then I'm going to take the very end of each one and I'm going to dip it in just a little bit of soapy water. Once that's done, I'm going to squeeze the primer bulb up to a maximum of 10 PSI. It's going to register on this gauge. If the pressure is not high enough to make either one of these leak, I'm going to remove the primer bulb, remove the gauge, put a higher pressure gauge, and connect this up to my air compressor. Let's get started. Door cell first with a D. Very carefully push it in. Push it in pretty good. Make sure there's enough in so when I clamp it, it holds it nice and tight. I do not want it popping out under pressure. Okay, let me slide the clamp over. I'm going to put some soapy water on this end. If there's any leakage, a bubble should form. And we should also see the pressure drop on the pressure gauge. One PSI at a time and see if any bubble forms at the end. I'm going to hold the pressure for about 15 seconds at each level. We take the soapy water and we dip this inside very quickly. Good. Now you're going to be looking right over here and I'm going to squeeze the bulb, start at 1 PSI and work my way up to 10. If there's no leaks, we'll try the energizer and then we're going to increase the level of pressure. Let's try that first. We try two. Hard to see at my angle if I'm on two exactly, but it might be a hair over. I don't see anything. If I do, I'll immediately swing it around your direction so you can see. Let's go to three. That looks pretty good. I think that's five. I don't want to go too fast. I might go. Okay, so we're at six. A little higher than seven. Nothing going on over here. Ooh, perfect. Nine PSI. Ten PSI. I'm going to let this sit for 15 minutes in case it has to penetrate through some of that manganese dioxide to get to the seal. Okay guys, 15 minutes of 10 PSI pressure on the battery seal and the reading is still the same. So 10 PSI is not enough to get that seal to leak. Let's remove the door cell and put in the energizer. Energizer is now ready to go. Okay, one PSI first. Okay, let's hit 10. And we're at 10. I'm going to let it sit 15 minutes just to make sure. All right, 15 minutes has passed and I don't see any bubbles and the pressure is still at 10. Let me go outside, modify the setup, connect it to my air compressor, and let's take it up a notch. Right here's my new setup. I have the hose from my air compressor connecting to what I used earlier. I took the pressure gauge off, which was 10 PSI, 
and I installed a higher pressure gauge. The battery that's installed is the Energizer. Based on the wall thickness of the battery, I don't think the pressure is going to be too high, but I could be wrong. Let's get started. The pressure right now is 10 PSI. Let's slowly increase towards 20 and continue to go higher. If you look at the gauge straight on, it's just a hair under 20 PSI. And still no sign of leaks from the battery. Now we're up to 35 and still nothing leaking out of that battery. Hard to believe that that seal hasn't leaked at 35 PSI. Let's continue to move up. 45 PSI guys and the battery seal is still not leaking. We're all the way up to 65 pounds per square inch. Let's increase pressure a little bit more. As you can see, 90 pounds per square inch and that battery seal has not leaked yet. Just over 140 pounds of pressure inside that AAA battery tube and the battery seal is still not leaking. It really makes you wonder as to how that battery leaks from pressure building inside when I have 140 pounds of pressure and the seal has not shown us any indication that it's leaking. The only thing I could think of is maybe the seal as the battery gets older, it starts to break down from the chemicals inside, making it much easier for the seal to leak. Okay, now let's try the door cell the same way. Let me place some soapy water on the door cell battery, right up against the end there. Just a hair under 55 PSI and still no leaks. Now 68 PSI. 85 PSI, still no leaks. Now at 100. 120 PSI. 135 and still no leak, but it looks like the door cell is getting ready to blow out of the tube. Two different tries, two different batteries. I don't know what to tell you. At that level of pressure, I would have thought that the batteries would have leaked, but obviously not. Either it takes a lot more pressure, or maybe over time the seals on the batteries being subjected to the chemicals causes them to break down and making leaking much easier. Even though both of the battery tests were inconclusive, at least we have an idea now of the high level of pressure that the seals can withstand. If you have any ideas for a follow-up test on this, Place them in the video comment area and I'll make another video. Thanks for watching.